Bay class. In this video, we are going to discuss abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is different from stomach ache, although they are in a, in a big, bigger category of edema. The stomach ache, we refer to the region that the patient feels in the upper area, the, in the upper edema, that's close to the stomach. And the abdominal pain, we refer to the location that's below the stomach, but above the pubic sperm. So in the entire edema area. For this area, we also can divide them into different regions. For example, in the center of the baby button, it's related to the spleen, it's related to the spleen and stomach, the foot high in meridian, and foot yang in meridian. This is also due to the distribution of the meridian. The location that is below the baby button, above the pubic sperm, that is the lower abdomen. The lower abdomen belongs to the kidney, the large intestine and small intestine, the urinary bladder, uterus. They are close related to the foot, sao yin, hand yang ming, foot and hand tai yang meridian as well as the Chong Meridian, Rong Meridian, Dai Meridian, the actual meridians. And on the side of the abdomen, it's related to the liver and gallbladder. So for one single disease of abdominal pain, it depends on where the patient feels the pain mostly. We're going to focus on different organs and different meridians. When studying the abdominal pain, apart from the understanding from the location of different regions, we also need to understand the etiology. What may cause the abdominal pain? In Huangdi Neijing, the abdominal pain, this disease name, initially were recorded in Huangdi Neijing. There's one chapter that's in Huangdi Neijing. It describes the the changes of the climate and the and the, uh, human diseases. It described that if in this year the elements of the earth, so from the five elements theory, the element of the earth is prevalent in the environment. The patient, the environment may the or the climate, the climate we may have more raining day more dampness. And because of the prevalence of the earth, the kidney will be affected, the water, the earth will affect the kidney. And then in this situation, people may suffer from abdominal pain. So this was the first record of abdominal pain that may relate to the changes of the climates. From this clause, we also can understand that Huangdi Neijing it described that the possible causes of the abdominal pain may be due to the coldness and heat. So that's from the one of the exogenous pathogens. In another article, still in Huangdi Neijing, there's one article discuss about the pen, so discussion on pen, different type of pen. In this article, the author described that if the coldness, the pathogen, the pathogenic coldness attack and stays in the large in the intestine, including the large intestine and small intestine, as well as the stomach. So it actually refers to the digestive system, if the coldness attack and stay in the, in, the, in the intestines and stomach, it will result in blastasis and the patient may present as pain, especially the cramping. So this is another clause that 
indicates the possible causes may be the coldness. In, an, in another text, still in the discussion on pain, the author says that the heat, if the pathogenic heat stay in the small intestine, patient will present as the pain in the small intestine. The patient may feel thirsty. The stool, the patient may present as dry stool constipation. This pain is due to blockage. So from this test, the author already told us that another possible cause is maybe the heat, maybe the blockage. But the blockage may be due to the heat and coldness. So from these classics, we understand from the, the text that the etiology of the abdominal pain may be due to coldness, heat. And the coldness and heat may result in blastasis, may result in blockage. This blockage may be blastasis, also may be qi blockage. So as the, the time moves on for further, it goes to Sang Han Zha Bing Lun, the second volume, Jing Gui Yao Lue. It also described that the patient may a patient presents with abdominal pain. If the patient prefers to be pressed on, this is deficiency. If you press on the, the abdomen, the patient feel more painful as excess. For excess, you can use purging method. Purging method, method that's something we can, we will study in the, in the next video, in the diarrhea. So how to cause purging, relief. You also can use the reducing technique from the needling technique. So from this clause, it tells us that we need to differentiate excess and deficiency. And followed by the excess and deficiency syndromes, we need to use different techniques. For deficiency, we need to tonify, reinforcing. For excess, if the patient feels worse when you press on the abdomen, then that's excess. You need to use reducing techniques. In Jing Gui Yao Lue, describe that if the patient suffers from coldness, if the coldness attack the abdomen, the patient may present as a lot of noise in the abdomen. The patient may present as chest oppressed, nausea, and vomiting. This is uh, another symptom or manifestations of abdominal pain due to coldness. So you will see from here, we still separate them into coldness and heat. But when we see the deficiency coldness, we will understand that the patient may present with other symptoms that can reflect internal coldness, such as the cold pain. The pain can be relieved upon heat. So when you put a hot water bottle, the patient may feel better. So from, from these developments, the treatment to, to the treatment towards abdominal pain because more and more techniques and guidance on the treatment, such as heat, coldness, plastasis, stagnation, dampness. So for instance, a patient suffers from coldness, the abdominal pain due to coldness. What can we do? We can use motivation, we can use reinforcing techniques. If you don't have anything, what can we do? We can use ginger. Uh, when we study the herbal medicine, we introduce a little bit of herbal medicine. Ginger has has the function or the characteristics of 
tangent and one. So we can you can boil fresh ginger, you can use about 15 to 20 grams of fresh ginger and boil it according to the, the process of cooking herbal medicine and you add some sugar. This ginger tea, gin, ginger brown sugar tea can help to relieve the pain due to coldness. This pain can be the abdominal pain, it can be a stomach ache, it can be the pain in gynecological problems that in future we will introduce, such as the dysmenorrhea. As Latin developed further, the practitioners in the, the Chinese medicine practitioners, they develop more etiology uh, theory and etiology in details, such as that one author says that we need to differentiate the etiology of qi blood, phlegm, dampness, or food stagnation. So these are all different etiology that we need to, different possible causes that we need to think when we see a patient. In Qing and Yuan dynasty, that's about a thousand years ago, the four different schools in Qing Yuan dynasty. The practitioner Li Dongyuan, he proposed that the pain is due to blockage. So the treatment of the abdominal pain, we need to focus on reducing the blockage. We can use herbal medicine or acupuncture, reduce the blockage, to relieve the blockage. Because in general, the, the pain, different type of pain is blockage and malnourishment. In 16th and 17th century, there's another author. He focuses on the blastasis that he described as a patient. In the, in the original text, it described as the specialist of blood. If a, is a, if a specialist of blood suffer from abdominal pain, it's, they, it is due to the blastasis. What does it mean by a specialist of blood? So this is the literature saying in Mandarin. If you do something and you, you become an expert, or you are an expert in blood, this expert in blood is not really experts because they this patient suffer from problems with the blood a lot, such as bleeding, nose bleeding, vomiting blood, or for ladies, excess bleeding in menstruation, or bleeding on the skin, always have blood problem, some something related to, to blood. Or doesn't have, sometimes doesn't have to be physical blood that you can see. Sometimes it may be the invisible blood that we can see from the purple tongue, cold extremities, purple lips. But this this group of patients they suffer from blood problem because they suffer from the blood problem for too long. They become experts in this group of patients, the experts who suffer from blood problem, their abdominal pain mostly related to the blood stasis. So he proposed that in the treatment of this group of patients, we need to focus on activating the blood circulation. We need to focus on removing the blood stasis. So, that's, uh, so he proposed a few formulas on uh, herbal medicine to activate, to remove the blood stasis. But now when we discuss acupuncture, these etiologies are still the same. We need to identify the coldness, the heat. We need to identify the excess or deficiency. And then we also need to identify the pathological products. Is it due to phlegm? You, if due to phlegm, you can see greasy coating. 
on, uh, on the town. Due to dampness, water recording loose door. Also made due to food retention. Due to food retention, the patient also may present as greasy coating or thick coating, but the food retention, the patient will have a history of food intake, improper food intake, or a history of poor digestive, system, uh, poor digestive function. So these are something we need to identify. Apart from all these causes, there's also one causes, the one possible causes that we need to consider, especially in kids. Parasites. The parasites, many types of parasites also may result in abdominal pain, especially the kids, especially in rural areas. In the cities, it's not that common now, but in the rural area, on the farm, it, it, is, it is still very common for kids to, be, to suffer from parasites. This also may result in abdominal pain. Abdominal pain, the location, the below the stomach and above the pubic bone. So the etiology we have explained previously, all the discussion that you can conclude into exogenous pathogens due to it can be due to the environment, the sudden change of the climate, improper diet, which may result in food retention, emotion changes. We, we, we didn't mention previously the emotion, such so especially the liver, the liver stagnation, or the sudden changes, dramatically changes of emotion, which may cause blockage of the circular qi and blood circulation. So similar to the previous discussion, whenever we discuss about pain, we focus on, whenever we talk about pain, we focus on the blockage or malnourishment. The malnourishment, that's what we discussed just now, the deficiency, because it's mostly related to the abdomen, so we will focus on the spleen and stomach. So if the pain in, in this region, we focus on the abdomen, uh, the, the spleen and stomach. If the pain is on the side, we focus on, you can focus on the liver and go bladder. If in the lower abdomen, we will focus on the kidney or the uterus, especially if it's due to the coldness, we can use mustipation. Because we also can use the warming needling techniques or the reinforcing technique of acupuncture. Essential differentiation. The main symptoms, the pain, different type of pain, but the location is in the abdomen area. The patient may present a poor appetite and abnormal bowel movements. It may be either constipation or diarrhea. Pupil retention. Thick, greasy coating. All smelling. Liver cheese stagnation. The pain may be relieved after bowel movements or sighing because these movements can relieve the qi, so it can relatively relieve the stagnation. That's also, on the other hand, to reflect that this patient may suffer from qi stagnation. It can be aggravated by anger. These are very typical symptoms of qi, liver qi stagnation. Blockage due to pathogenic coldness. Coldness, cold environment of food intake. So the patient will have severe pain that's characteristic of coldness. Sparing, relieved by warm. 
spin yang deficiency prefer to be pressed the warmth is because the yang deficiency may result in internal coldness so the heat the warmth may relieve the man this patient also may present with a cold sensation and loose stool. A young deficiency mostly can be reflected in the cold, in the cold, uh, in the cold sensation. As also, you can see the description here, Abdom abdominal aching. We don't use the, the term pain. Or when we compare with the uh, coldness, we say severe pain. The aching, which means this pain is not severe. The, but the patient didn't feel comfortable. That's why aching. That's also the characteristic of deficient pain. This abdominal aching. Before we move to the treatment principles, in clinical practice, before we determine the tumor principles, we still need to differentiate from other diseases. We need to exclude other possible diseases that have similar man manifestations. For example, the abdominal pain and the stomach ache, they're all in the abdomen area. The stomach ache, what's the location? It's the, in the upper abdomen. The, the area closer to, to the stomach. Also for stomach ache, patients are more likely to accompany with nausea, vomiting, or heartburn, this sensation. But for abdominal pain, patient may present with other symptoms that are related to the lower digestive tract. Related to the large intestine, related to the more intestine it can be reflected in the, the bowel movements. So that's one of the diseases we need to differentiate on the stomach ache and abdomen. Sometimes we cannot rely on the reports of the patient. The patient will tell you I got the stomach ache, but actually this patient got the low abdomen at low abdomen pain. So you need to perform the physical examination. Ask the patient to lie on the bed. You need to use your hand to press, to palpate where the pain is, where the patient, when you press where, or ask the patient to show you where they feel the pain. I, uh, I saw one COVID patient because of a COVID, so we use online consultation. And because of the connection here, sometimes it's not good. The patient tell me that she goes the chest tightness, chest oppress. So I asked her, and, and when I check the, the I asked her to check the oxygen. The oxygen is not not low, so I confused a little bit. Why this patient will present as chest oppress? But the chest oppress is also a very common symptom for COVID nineteen, especially the third wave. So I prescribed the herbal medicine to relieve the chest oppress. And then after one week, the patient didn't feel relief. The chest oppress still counts and goes. And then in a, uh, a follow-up consultation, I asked the patient to show me where do you feel the pain. So because of the, the live video doesn't work that well, I asked the patient to take a picture for me. So to point the location for me where you feel the pain, and then all of a sudden, the patient says it's right here, the chest oppress. And then once I see the location, I realize that this patient, the location is not chest oppress, but actually more related to the stomach. So I change the formula to focus on the stomach. And you will see this, this is the differentiated disease. Sometimes the patient won't tell you clearly and correctly where the location. 
So we need to perform a fecal examination, don't rely on patient. This is also one of the shortage of online consultation. So firstly, the stomach ache. Secondly, some diseases such as diarrhea, some patients also may present as some uh, pain in the abdomen. So in this situation, you need to differentiate, identify which one is the dominant. Is the diarrhea result in abdominal pain or the abdominal pain accompanied with the diarrhea? That's something you need to think about. Also from the physical examination, we can sometimes to exclude some common diseases such as tumor. If the abdominal pain is due to tumor, no matter what kind of treatment you're going to perform, from herbal medicine, from acupuncture, you may relieve temporarily. You won't heal the patient. But how do you know? You need to palpate. So some, some students or some practitioners, especially when they practice, practice long, they are to rely on the images. They don't perform any physical examinations. So these are the first evidence that we can collect from our clinical practice, the fecal examinations. We need to palpate. If you palpate some tumor or some objects in the abdomen, you need to send the patient for further examination to exclude tumor or even cancer. The abdominal pain sometimes also may relate to some diseases that's related to external, uh, that's related to the, such as the kidney stone or appendicitis. These diseases we can relieve temporarily. You have to send the patient to the KOT. Sometimes some patients, when they tell you they got abdominal pain, because every few weeks, a lady suffer from abdominal pain every few weeks, you need to exclude or you need to identify, the, you need to you, you need to differentiate that this pain is it abdominal pain or the pain that related to kidney problem? The pain related to kidney problem is not only dysmenorrhea, for example. It's the pain related to menstruation, related to leukorrhea, related to pregnancy. So these are very important. If a patient was delayed menstruation, and now all of a sudden suffer from extremely severe pain in the low abdomen. All what you need to do, you, you need to exclude the possibility of certain abortion. You need to exclude the, the possibility of the pregnancy happen in the tube, not in the uterus, especially when the tube breaks out. So all these, it, Severe diseases we need to exclude. Otherwise, if you put the needles on the patient and it says that you're going to be fine after the two months, you're going to be in trouble because you mix diagnose, especially when you mix diagnose with emergencies or severe diseases, you may result in trouble, especially because sometimes the patient's life is threatening. When we come back to the treatment principles, we will the treatment principles we are based on the central joint differentiation of food retention, liver cheese stagnation. These are excess syndromes, so we will use acupuncture only, reducing technique, blockage reduce coldness. We can use acupuncture and motion because of the coldness. We can use motion to warm a spleen yang deficiency combination of acupuncture and motion reinforcing technique. 
the points we may select row 12, summer 25, row 4, summer 36. These are the most common basic points that you can select. Row 12, that's the, the meeting points of organs. Summer 25, that's the local points. Room 4. Summer 25 have, uh, is very special. This point have the, the function of, uh, you can use this point for constipation. You also can use this point for diarrhea. So that's the, the, one of the very special characteristics of acupuncture. We re recover the function to balance. For diarrhea, we can stop the, the bowel movements. For constipation, we can improve the bowel movements on the same point. Room 4. Room 4, especially suffer from patients suffer from lower abdominal pain due to yang deficiency, due to coldness, we can use mosibation or the warm needling technique. Summer 36, this is a low C point the low C point of the stomach. Apart from the summer 36, you also can, depends on, on the location, you also can use the low C points of the large intestine, the low C points of the small intestine, Sang Ju Xu, Xia Ju Xu. So uh, just double check the number, it's very close to stomach 36. The retention. You can add stomach 44. Liver qi, you can add the points on the liver to activate the circulation. You also can add the points of large intestine 4. So that's the paired points that you can use liver 3 and large intestine 4. The blockage of coldness, you can use the mostly mushroom on these points. Spleen yang deficiency, also motivation. The back two points for deficiency. But when we perform the treatments for spleen yang deficiency, we need to think about the convenience. The some points in the front abdomen, some on, on the back. So preferably, we will see that the points that the patient doesn't have to move here and there, or the patient doesn't have to be lying for half an hour to have the tumor in the front abdomen, uh, the, the front part, and then like on their stomach and have another tumor for the back. So preferably, we will see that the point that's convenient for the patient, convenient for the pa for the treatments, and still have the same efficacy. Needle techniques, motivation and one needle technique. Room eight, you can use motivation with salt. So that's this technique we have introduced in our practice. Other treatment techniques, the auricular acupuncture, we're not going to go through detail, you can always use. So for most slides, you can apply if you want to. But this point, this treatment, I won't use for acute stage, only for chronic abdominal pain and the patient is not convenient to come for the treatment, you can use this. Apart from acupuncture, you also can use herbal medicine plaster, the bran, spring onion, ginger, salt, and wine. You're going to stir fry all those ingredients. You're going to uh, stir fry the, the the ingredient without the, the wine and vinegar first. And once they become hot, you can add the wine and vinegar. And then you place the, the whole ingredients in your, in your bag and apply to the abdomen area. So this treatment can be used for intern, due to internal coldness and deficiency coldness. This, is, this treatment, also this formula, also can be used for the pain due to coldness, uh, other pains that are due to coldness, such as arthritis, pain in the joints, you also can use this. 
And then once the, the herbs become cold, you can warm them up again and apply again. In this video, we mainly discuss the abdominal pain uh, when we see this patient, this type of diseases. In the clinical acupuncture or the acupuncture therapeutics, we always focus on the, the treatment principles. The differentiate diseases and differentiate the syndrome. So you need to differentiate with other diseases that have similar manifestations. This will help you to avoid misdiagnosis. Once you misdiagnose, you will have the wrong treatment. So the first thing you need to think about when, whenever we see patients is what are the possible diseases we have to exclude? What are the possible syndromes that we have to exclude? in order to get the correct treatment, to get the correct end of the syndrome. So in this video, we mainly discuss the abdominal pain. In the next video, we are going to study the diarrhea and constipation. Thank you for your attention. So just one more comment on the abdominal pain. Although acupuncture can relieve the pain very effectively, as a practitioner, we always need to help the patient to find the, the original cause. So although the pain can be relieved, it is advised to clarify the correct diagnosis and the, the actual causes of the pain. This may be the long-term solution for the patient to heal the long-term solution to heal this patient, to heal this disease, not only maintaining or controlling the, the symptom. Thank you for your attention.